They're literally going to have to make moves in seconds now. 12 seconds. You, you see the the outline of the mating attack. Gukash, he pushes his pawn, it looked like. But here comes Rook takes F7, and the bar is all the way up. That means there is a checkmated construction. Gukash brings his king back, slaps the clock. And Alireza, he needs to make a move. He is down to, oh, five seconds. He plays knight F8, and he's found the checkmate. There it is. Gukash, he puts his hand in the air. He cannot believe it. Ali Reza Faruja has landed a checkmate. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are watching one of the most exciting chess games from the Candidates Tournament 2024 in Toronto, Canada. And this game was played as a part of the seventh round between Ali Reza Firouzia playing as white, his opponent, Indian superstar Domaraju Gukesh. And as you saw from the intro, a truly spectacular game from start to finish with even greater end game and truly exciting moments from Ali Reza Firouzia. Both players got into time trouble and you will see a truly exciting exciting endgame moment and unfortunately heartbreaking loss from Domaraju Gukesh. Stay with me, you will not regret it, a truly exciting game is on our hands. So without further ado, we will go straight into the game. Ali Reza opens the game with d4, we have knight to f6 for black, bishop f4 and d5 was played for black and we are in accelerated London system. White continues with e3, we have c5 on the board trying to undermine this pawn structure. White continues with knight to f3, and right now we have e6 on the board protecting this pawn and also developing this dark squared bishop. We have knight b to d2 for white and right now we have first move queen to b6 for Domaraju Gukesh. Now Domaraju Gukesh is taking the advantage that this bishop has already moved and there is no defender of this uh, b2 pawn so white is forced to react and unfortunately and really good thing for black is that no longer long castle is possible for white which is a really important thing in london system because white wants to create a counter attack on the king's wing we have c takes on d4 for black e takes on d4 and bishop d7 developing move for black black's idea is also that this bishop will now aimed toward the b5 square and black wants to exchange this weak white squared bishop because this is like a big pawn as they say in chess you want to trade this for this strong white squared bishop of white of course c3 was played uh, for white and we have bishop to b5 now played for gukesh aiming at this bishop white continues with h4 now this is usually the recommendation of the computer uh alpha zero recommends this move also recommends pushing this pawn whenever you are in trouble strategically it is always good to push your flank pawns so this is the computer recommendation and of course alireza firozia plays it we have knight b to d7 developing move for black and we have a rook to h3 another good idea for white now in these positions obviously as you can see white lost the right to castle this bishop is attacked and white will have to satisfy himself with artificial castle if this trade happens and white's idea is to put this rook on g3 and then aim at this king when the castle happens of course black rarely castles along in these positions of course so this is the idea a beautiful idea also of the computer and this a4 h4 move we have bishop to e7 now developing and now we have h5 Again, computer suggestion, and now h6. Domaraju Gukesh decided to stop this advance of this pawn, of course. a4, so finally forcing this bishop to make a decision. Where will you go? Will you trade or will you go back? Uh, going back is not a good move, so bishop takes on f1 is played. And right now, king takes on f1. As I mentioned before, uh, white king will go here and he will be in artificial castle. We have castle for black, and right now king to g1 was played for white. Queen to c6, now a little bit maneuvering, maneuvering in the center, and right now Alireza Firuzia first breaks this tension with knight to e5, attacking this queen and this knight. We have knight picking up on e5, d takes on e5, and right now this knight is attacked. Knight to d7, a retreating move for black. And right now we have a rook to g3 with a deadly threat of picking this pawn on h6. We have king to h8, obviously spotted by Domaraju Gukesh and right now we have a5 here on the board pushing another flank pawn and trying to get this pawn as far as as far as possible into into black's position a queen to c7 with a double attack was played for Domaraju Gukesh and right now Alireza Firuzia thinks and he decided that it is best to save this pawn here on e5 and he plays knight to f3 leaving this pawn free for taking we have queen picking up on a5 and right now we have a c4 on the board now it is worth mentioning that 
After queen to a5, we had this uh, continuation with bishop picking up on h6, g takes on h6, a queen to d2 with a direct threat of attacking this pawn and checkmating. And after king to h7, queen d3 check, king h8, and pardon me, uh, queen to d2. So Ali Reza Firuzia could have drawn the game here easily, but he decided to be brave, and uh, in the end, it turned out good for him. So c4 on the board, another temporarily sacrifice. Of course, immediately you cannot take this because this knight is pinned, obviously. We have a rook to g8 now played for uh, Domaraju Gukesh, a prophylaxis move just to protect this pawn, and right now, bishop taking on, on h6 is no longer a threat at all. We have rook to a1 now played uh, for white. Now, this is a mistake of the position, at least by computer calculation. But a queen to b4 was played uh, for black. Uh, right now, again, picking up this pawn is not a possibility because this uh, bishop on f4 is pinned. This game was uh, full of pins. You will see it until the end. So we have a b3 on the board right now protecting this pawn, of course. And right now, knight to c5, great move by Domaraju Gukesh. And now from the commentators, if you watched it, they thought that black was actually had a significant advantage here and he was doing just fine and he was in control. We have knight to d4 for white and another great move by Domaraju Gukesh. Uh, going with his knight in the center, attacking this rook. Alireza has to retreat. He plays a rook to e3. And right now, queen to c5 was played uh, uh, for black. And we are already in the critical part of the position where a rook to c1 was played uh, for white. After this move, <coughs> black decided to play rook g to d8 here which seems like a completely uh, logical move, but actually uh, better was rook a to c8 here, simply keeping the tension here on the board and not trading for this pawn here. Now, why this is important, I will now show you. Uh, so after queen to c5, uh, if white decided to trade here, then after queen to d5, uh, this uh, queen is perfectly fine here. White, uh, black wants to avoid picking up this pawn with his pawn here, because this would weaken his position, of course. I will now show you. Uh, so we have a rook to c, uh, rook to c1, rook g to d8 was played for Domaraju Gukesh, and right now b4, brilliant move by Alireza Firuzia, sacrificing another pawn. But you have to open up the position and you have to enter this because this anything else will no longer be a possibility. Of course, I will now show you. So of course you have to accept this, and after c takes on d2, <coughs> black finds a brilliant move. Now just wanted to show you this that. In case uh, rook to d5 is played, then white has a rook to e4 here with a pin on this queen and a perfectly fine position. White is already almost a point up here in the position. Pay attention. So uh, this is how this uh, position can be a complicated, <coughs> complicated one. And if e takes on d5 is played, this is something... Um, uh, black has to avoid because right now this leaves this f5 square uh, really weakened here and white is doing better because of this position you want to avoid this picking up this pawn with your pawn you want to pick up with your piece that's the main idea of the position so after b4 we have queen takes on b4 c takes on d5 and domaraju gukesh finds this brilliant knight takes on f2 so you are paying the price you will have two pawns King takes on f2, and right now rook takes on d5, and now black is doing just fine. He's better right now, and as you can see, a lot of pins all across the board. This bishop is pinned, this queen is pinned, and how to get out of this position. So uh, Ali Reza Firuzia plays calmly, rook to e4, covering all the pins here. We have rook a to d8, black continues the pressure. Bishop e3 is a must here to protect this uh a knight and right now after bishop c5 it looks like this a knight will fall but alireza firuzia finds the only move of the position that's a brilliant queen b3 forcing the trade of the queens in the game queen takes on b3 was played but after queen takes on b3 if you're wondering if black tries with rook taking up on d4 then uh, white can actually sacrifice the queen with rook picking up on d4 and after queen takes on b3 Rook takes on d8, check, king goes on h7, and bishop picking up on c5, uh, sorry, not bishop picking up on c5, but uh, rook picking up on uh, c5, because this would blunder a rook. Uh, white is doing just fine here. Now, this should be a draw with perfect play for black, but white is perfectly fine here. He's, uh, by computer evaluation, uh, even better here, and definitely a much easier position to play here as white. So that is the reason that, uh, after queen to b3, forcing this trade and going into the the endgame was the best here for Alireza Firozia. 
we have bishop picking up on e3 uh, rook picks up on e3 and a5 and again we are coming into into the critical part of the position uh, Domaraju Gukesh's main idea was to push this pawn and try and go for the queen. Unfortunately, it is a bit too late. Now, after rook, uh, after rook to e3, the, maybe the best move was to play b6 and simply not allow this knight of jumping in the position because, as you will see later in the game, this was critical part of the positional mistake uh, which uh, uh, Gukesh uh, basically lost. This was the main idea why Gukesh lost, because he allowed this knight to enter the position. But after rook takes on e3, the position, of course, is not lost. It is, com is completely equal, but this move, of course, allows rook to e7. And right now, a4, another mistake. Again, maybe b5 or b6 was here better, but now this allows this knight to jump here. And right now, again, a rook to a8 was played for black and already slowly this position is going into the into the white's favor now after knight to c5 again maybe b5 was best here and it still holds completely a draw here white still needs to find <coughs> a lot of ways to attack this uh, black king but we have knight to c5 a rook to a8 with the idea to push this pawn and protect this pawn and right now we have a knight to d7 Black now decided to play king to h7. Now, unfortunately, this doesn't work. Uh, knight to d7. After knight to d7, again, a b5. Yes, this looks like uh, this leaves this fork, of course. This is the main idea of this move, one of the ideas of this move. But another idea is to jump around with this knight and aim at these weak squares and creating a checkmate threats. So after b5, if uh, white goes knight b6, then rook to d2, king f3, and rook to b8, and black is completely fine. So after knight to d7, this was scary, of course, but the main idea, as I mentioned, is to aim at these squares and going for possible checkmate late in the game. Now, of course, in the game, <coughs> uh, king h7 was played, but I will show you what would happen after this move if you went here a3. Then brilliant sacrifice rook takes on a3. And you cannot take this rook, because if you take this rook, then a rook to c8 check, king h7, knight f8 check, King to g8, knight g6, a discover check, rook to d8, forced, rook picks up on d8, king h7, and brilliant mating net, rook to h7, rook to h8 is a checkmate. So, always have to be careful about uh, these sort of things. So, after knight to d7, king to h7, weakens the position, we have a rook to f3 played for white. These now players were uh, almost low, not almost, but they were low on time. Uh, around one and a half minute here so it was tension building up here we have a3 a final blunder of the position and right now after rook takes on f7 now nothing here works in the game king h8 was played which is uh completely losing the position after rook takes on f7 if a2 is played then knight to f6 check king h8 and rook takes on g7 with the next move uh, rook h7 checkmate so you cannot do nothing after rook takes on f7 game continued with uh, king to h8 we have king to uh, knight to f8 right now threatening a discover check with knight to g6 here and after a2 we have knight to g6 check and after this move Ali Reza, uh, Domaraju Gukesh resigned the game because he saw that the time was late and his king is getting checkmated. Now, after knight to g6, if king on h7, uh, then simply rook takes on g7 is the checkmate. After knight to g6 check, if king goes on g8, whenever you go with your king, rook takes on g7 is a checkmate. A truly spectacular way to find a winning endgame. Even if you promote to a queen, this doesn't come with a check and you are just one move late. Unfortunately, the power of knight and a rook is a really shown in this game. And this is how this beautiful game ended, guys. And this is all I have prepared for you today. If you enjoyed this game, please make sure to leave a comment, like and share this video with other people who enjoy chess. Because word of mouth referrals like this really help my channel grow. Also, it would greatly help if you watch this video until the very beginning, until the very end. Because YouTube usually recommends uh, videos that uh, are watched uh, a lot during the watch time. Of course, if you watch it a lot, if my watch time is around five or six minutes per each video, YouTube will recommend it more to other people. So it is also another way to help me by watching my videos uh, at least until the half of the video. And if not, of course, then the end of the video would be great. 
please let me know what do you think about this game what do you think about other candidates change uh, chances in the tournament who is your winner in your opinion <clears throat> who do you think will win we're seven more rounds here to go uh tonight is also another round be tonight will be played another round of this tournament of course and uh, we will see who will come at the top after the round eight uh, for now jan nepomnyoshi is leading and uh, uh please guys do let me know your thoughts about the candidates tournament also about the analysis or about anything else you would like to share with me thank you so much in advance and i wish you a pleasant day bye bye